Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pop, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, um, I'm doing a review of Manhunt by Gretchen Felker Martin, or at least I think I am. Now, traditionally, uh, the way you do a review of a book is you read the book and then you figure out what you think of it and then you tell you know, your audience or your reader um, what you thought of the book. The, the problem I've got in reviewing Manhunt is I'm still not sure what I thought of it. So I, I finished it yesterday um, and, and it, was, it was quite an experience. Um, I think it's probably the angriest book I've ever read. Um, it was shockingly angry. Um, and I think having read it and immersed myself in it, I, I get why. Um, so I think that's probably what this review is largely going to be about. But first of all, let's talk about you know what the book's about. So so it is a um, a near future horror novel, kind of not dyst- I don't know if it's dystopian or post apocalyptic. I suppose it's post apocalyptic. About a a so it's set in America and about a time when um, the world has been ravaged by something called the T Rex virus, which is a virus that. Um, turns men into um, like rabid, sex-crazed monsters um, who roam around the countryside looking for women to um, screw and then eat in, in that order. Um, and the potency of the virus is such that if a, if a woman is, is, you know, becomes pregnant um, and the baby is male, um, then the baby will literally eat its way out of her um, rather than being rather than being born in a more traditional manner um so that's the that's the setup and the the women who are you know who are left in the world are you know defending themselves you know forming militias and things like that to defend themselves against these you know these rampaging male monsters so that's the setup and it's a similar setup to um you know there there have been a number of gender apocalypse as they tend to be called books recently um there was there was Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King, which kind of, you know, was a slightly different take on it, but a, a story where, um, you know, one gender, something weird happens to them. Um, and the thing that is missing in a lot of these stories, a lot of these books, is in, in that scenario, how are trans characters treated? How are trans, you know, how are trans people affected? And that's often ignored. So I think this is an important book because it because it does it address the trans experience and, and people who watch the channel will know that i love you know one of my favorite things is genre fiction or trashy fiction and i'm not saying this is trashy but you know what i mean genre fiction popular fiction that um uses a um a you know common trope of its genre like you know this does to address more important issues to have a you know a conversation about something deeper and more important um and manhunt manhunt definitely does that um but it does it in a way that i struggle that i struggle with to be you know completely frank so as i've said the set so the setup is men are all monsters women are defending themselves and there are trans characters and what happens in the book is that the the you know many of the women who have survived feel threatened by the presence of trans women so they do not consider them to be women despite the fact that they are not affected by this virus um as long as they keep on um taking you know some sort of medication to um you know balance their hormones and things like that or or um to eat the testicles of men which which is something that happens a lot in this book um so you know they they will kill they will kill the monstrous men and then fry up their testicles in a stir fry and, and eat them and that keeps the keeps the virus at bay. But the women are you know the women are um, threatened feel threatened by the trans characters or the trans female the, the trans female characters anyway, um, and um, you know hunt them down and, and try and kill them. So you've got at the centre of the book you've got these two trans women, um, Beth and Fran, who are friends, who are you know dodging. The monstrous men and also dodging 
you know these these bands of of violent women who are in the book called turfs um who are you know who are after them um and there's also a trans male character um who teams up with them um called bobby is it bobby or robbie i forget now it's either bobby or robbie um who's who's you know an interesting character as well so what this book does brilliantly is set the scene for all of this the, you know the opening 50 pages or so are really gripping they're action-packed and really move at a pace and you get to know both the you know both the world and the characters really quickly i thought gretchen felker martin did a brilliant job um, of opening the book uh, and after that it becomes more problematic or it did for me anyway and, and a lot of people love this book um the thing i struggle with with it is a, that there's a fair amount of repetition in it, so it kind of makes the same points over and over again. And secondly, it's incredibly bleak. It's one of the, as I said at the start, it's one of the angriest books I've read. It's bleak, it's heartbreaking, it's absolutely heartbreaking. And the reason for all of those things is what she does, you know, what the author does very cleverly is to use this, you know, this futuristic horror set up as a way to talk about the existence of trans people today so clearly you know we are living through a time at the moment where society is is readjusting um you know we lived for decades centuries where you know trans people were either not talked about at all or if they were were not accepted and now they are becoming a much more accepted part of our society 100% 100% support that so I think that's brilliant and there is a you know my extended family has has a trans person in it um so our society is becoming more accepting of, of trans people which it should be but there are also voices in our society and you know most famously of course author J.K. Rowling who are threatened by trans people in the in the same way that the TERFs in this book are um and that is you you really feel the desperation of the you know the two trans women in particular at the heart of this book as they try you know literally to survive in this world um you know to survive physically to to stay alive and not be killed but also to survive in their own skins to to come to terms with themselves and to accept who they are and it's it's all incredibly sad and incredibly moving um but it's also so bleak and so angry that it's 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 not a fun read that's the only that's the only way i can i can think of describing it and whereas something like i'm trying to think of a book that's incredibly bleak and dark so some something like the girl next door by jack ketchum which I've talked about on the channel before, is incredibly difficult to read, and an incredibly horrible book, as as this is. But somehow, I think for me, because perhaps because whilst the girl next door is based on a true event, it's not based on the real life experience of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, which this is, and I think. This felt the girl next door feels quite detached from from what is happening in it, whereas this almost feels like lived experience. Whilst whilst it is a fan, you know clearly a horror fantasy, um, there's a rawness to it that is so difficult to read at times that I really I really found it difficult. So I finished it, and, and I'm glad I finished it. Um, and as I say, I think it is an important book, an important part of this ongoing conversation about how we, as a as a society, you know, how, how I and people like me, as you know, heterosexual cis men, and and you know how the rest of society adjust to allow people who have always been part of our society to allow them to to be themselves. Yeah, and it's you know it's hugely important we do that and i think this book is an important part of that conversation and it probably advances that conversation in some ways but boy is it hard to read it's really hard to read and i've been chatting to people on discord and other places about it since i finished it 
and quite a lot of people DNF'd it but they just didn't get on with it and I don't think that's necessarily to do with the politics or the message of the book I think it's just because it's a really difficult book to read um, so do I recommend it? Probably um, so, so one of the things that, that triggered me to read this, I, I was aware of it already. One of the things that triggered me, read, triggered me to read it was a review on BookTube by, say, Kevy, who's a you know another BookTuber and also a drag queen. And the, and the kind of headline of that review was, everybody should read this book unless they're trans. And the reason for that was it's so raw and so triggering about the, you know the reality of, of being trans that it's you know almost too painful and i think you know i think that holds true you know it held true for me as well whilst i'm not impact you know not directly impacted by the things that are discussed in this book i found it really really bleak and depressing and difficult um so yes <laughs> that's that's my jolly jolly review um, of uh, Manhunt by Gretchen Falcon Martin. Um, so uh, if you've read it, do let me know what you thought because I'm really interested to, to talk with other people about this book because of the impact it had on me. Um, yeah, it's it's I'm, st I'm still processing, as you can probably tell from this very rambly video. Um, but yeah, let, let me know, let me know. Anyway, as always, hope you're safe and well. Hope you're reading good stuff and I will speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.